G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, the other day I was driving down the street and uh, heading off to do something and uh, Saturday morning and there was the, uh, the old garage sale sign up leaning against the, the uh, street corner sign and uh, gar said garage sale, had an arrow on it and uh, I thought, what the hell, I'll shoot up and have a quick look because you never know what you're going to find in garage sales. There can be there's a lot of rubbish and you can get some good stuff at times and I've had some pretty amazing buys over the years. Anyway, I went to this one. The guy run it was a pretty sharp character and uh, amongst all these rubbish he had this and he had this little scribe that uh, it's got a nice old school scribe and uh, I, thought, I mean I've got a scribe, the one I use is a straight one like that which was my father's originally uh, but this these are nice, they, uh, you can hold them, you know, on the flat and uh, they're a good little scribe. Anyway, um, I saw this and of course straight away I thought, yep, I'll grab that. Now a lot of people uh, probably don't know what this is. It's not a divider, it's actually a caliper. And the problems call them oddly jennies, and so do other people. Um, quite often they'll have a scribe here and then this little arm here will have a, a bend in it and what it's for is to mark center point on the end of stock and uh, this is basically where you rest it on the outside edge of the stock this one's got a little fulcrum a little fulcrum point which is really nice so you can get it right on the edge uh, in a in a the same position all the way around and it's made of stainless steel but as you can see like a lot of things at garage sales, there's something wrong. It's uh, someone's put a screw in here which isn't original, and it's lost the the knob, the bits. That doesn't matter. Anyway, I said to the guy, "How much for this?" And it's stainless steel too, so it's quite good. I said to the guy, "How much is this?" And he said, "Oh, a buck, dollar." And I said, "Okay." I said, "Chuck in the scribe." And he said, "Yeah, okay." So I got two of these for a, a dollar. So now the task is make up a knob and um, put a thread through onto a tightening knob and uh, get on with the job. So we will. I should point out that the actual correct name for the uh, odd leg Jenny is hermaphrodite calipers. <laughs> hermaphrodite calipers. Sounds like some nasty disease you'd uh, you'd get to go and see the doctor about. But anyway, um, that's the correct name. How the hell they come up with that is beyond me. Anyway, to do this job, you're going to need a, uh, to do a nice job, you're going to need a, a knurling uh, attachment. And this is one I've got. It's only a cheapy HBM, got it from the UK. And I do all my knurling with this scissor type. Scissor type of the, well, the, the, they're the best for small lays because you can take a lot of the side thrust off uh, by pincing down on the job and if the job's too big you can always use them as conventional knurl and put, drive them in with the, uh, with the cross slide so you can use them both ways they're not just to be used as a pin pincer type uh, uh, knurl and uh, yeah I've got that's the original set of rollers I've got some heavier ones here that I've got off the internet and uh, a coarser pattern and there's a spare one I found in some junk I bought that was a lone soul. I think you can buy these for, I don't know, <laughs> spent a little while but it wasn't expensive I think maybe the $30 mark, I'm not sure on that but this is okay. Uh, they all get a bit of side flex in them, some are more, more rigid than others because if you make them too bulky then you can't get in close to the chuck or the collet and in this situation I'll be using collets a lot to make up the uh, the adjusting knobs, the tightening knob for the for the calipers, and uh, once again, if you've got a big a big lathe, you're going to be up that creek trying to do jobs like this because they're just too big. And uh, you know, for home hobby use, don't get one that's too big. Get it, get you know, one with a five inch chuck, uh, you know, up to five inch chuck is a good size for doing stuff like this. Anyway, we'll get on with the job. Right, well I've got a bit of leftover steel here from another job. It's about the right size for a tightening knob, one of the tightening knobs. 
and uh, I don't know what this thing had originally, this, this, uh, this caliper, whether it had a screw or I would think it would have had a adjusting, tightening knobs each side, um, judging by the way it looks. So uh, anyway, I'm going to use uh, a shear tool just to finish this off. It's got a bit of a lip here. A good way to use these is bring them in so they just touch the job and then just go across. And then basically that's enough to do a, a pass. Um, just the pressure on the job is, uh, is all you want. So uh, they don't need much. Put on your fine feed. And there we go. They certainly do do a terrific job on finishing off uh, metal, and even though I'm going to nail this, the model would make a good job of it. And uh, yeah, and there's also not a lot of pressure on the uh, on the job, so I haven't got a uh, I haven't got a live center on this at the moment. How's that look, huh? Pretty neat. Well, that's a fan that is a fantastic finish. I mean, that is just brilliant, you know. So now we'll uh, we'll knurl that. Now I always do my knurling at the beginning of the job. When you're making up something like this, clean up your metal, then use your knurl because once you've knurled it, then you can do your fancy ends, and that way you can machine up against the edge of the knurl and get a nice nice clean or rounded edge if you use say a uh, round nose cutter and you can dress it up nicely otherwise if you leave your knurling till the last part of the job well then you're going to have to clean all the ragged edges up because when you knurl this metal it will squash the metal out sideways and it will come over the edges and uh, well we we'll just have to remachine it again so you might as well knurl it first and uh, once again you can still hold it <laughs> If you've got collets, you can hold this no problem at all. Even with a knurl on it, it won't mark the knurl at all. And this is that size that will easily go into collets. So I'll be doing the, uh, the finishing off and the threading probably. Uh, I might use a shawblin on that. Okay, so next job is to knurl that. Right, to do knurling, it's best to use a, a live centre on it, so I will, just to give it some more support, because there's a big load on the lathe when you do knurling. Also, for regular knurling, you put it on your coarsest feed, so just a regular pattern. If you want to get a spiral effect, you put it on a fine feed, and, that would, and just cant the, the head slightly, but for a regular pattern, we'll just go straight in, and uh, I have it on the coarsest feed, slowest speed you've got on the lathe, and just put a bit of lube on there. Make sure you oil your your rollers on your on your nail with a bit of regular oil, and you're good to go. Right now, there's various ways to do this. Some people like to put the nail on on centre and then get the shifter and crank it down and force it into the into the job with the uh, with the bolt pulling it down. I reckon that's a butcher's way of doing it myself and I was taught differently. I was taught to bring it in on centre screw it down until it makes contact. So you bring it in with no load on it, pull it down onto it so it makes contact so you're on you're on centre, just check it yeah, that's both rollers are turning. Okay, so now you back it out. Go about a third of a quarter to third of a turn. We should be good to go. So now what we'll do is start her up. A little lube. The rollers are okay because I used this the other day and it's oh, I'll give it a gap I suppose. Be all right. I've used this recently. Okay, now we just wind it in, and uh, when it bites, hit the feed lever. Crank 
Frank around the center. Now hit the feed, feed layer. As you can see, the lays handle this quite easily. All right, now just crank off, cut off the feed, back it out. Didn't go hard enough. All right. We'll have to uh, give it a bit more on the on the adjuster. This method, you can just bring it back in, and it'll feed it in again. It will find the pattern, and you can just go over it again. All right. Try it again. More like it. That's yeah, biting in. Didn't have quite enough pressure on it. Okay, that looks a lot better. So that's perfect. And as you can see, it re-engaged the knurl. No problem. That's, that's a good job. Plenty good enough for this job anyway. All right, now I'll just dress the end up a bit. Now I've put the speed uh, up again. Go on to our medium feed. This is why I like quick change gearboxes on the feeds you can go from coarse to, to uh, fine or medium so it's a lot of rooting around and uh, well changing the belts on this lathe for the spindle speed is no big deal it's not a, not a big job it's not that bad so okay we'll just clean up the end here put a bit of a step we're going to reduce the diameter and put a shoulder on it so we'll just uh, come in on this Better. Right. Right, so we've done our knurling, we've done our thread, we've cleaned up the end. At this stage you could uh, part it off on the lathe. I'm just going to use that band saw, be quicker. And then I'll just uh, put the, uh, the cut off knob into the uh, shoreblin in a collet and I'll just clean it up and uh, reduce it to whatever thickness I want to make the knob and we're good to go. Okay, we've all the old girl up, so we'll just uh, square up the face, take it, reduce the thickness. I mean, it doesn't really matter how thick it is, but we'll just make it a little bit less than the other one, I think. We've got a fair bit of overhang on this cutter, but we should be alright. Do it for another job the other day. 
Okay, well here we go. That's the one we just did. And let's turn it quite nicely. It's the same width as the main tensioning one which I did earlier. That's got a little spacer I made up in there you can see. And the shaft is, the thread is bronzed into the, uh, the tightening nail, knob, whatever. And this is a a spacer that goes in the end here which matches the the other one in dimension so we'll just put it together now and we'll see how she looks and here's the finished job and as you can see that's the tensioning knob and that's the little lock nut that uh, locks up the, uh, the thread uh, actual fact, uh, I've made both of these the same width. This is a slightly smaller diameter, just to differentiate between the two. And uh, yeah, it's got a nice, nice good feel to it. So I'll show you how you use these little gadgets, and uh, we'll mark out the end of a tin can. Just to demonstrate how this works, imagine this is a piece of round stock. You want to just find the centre point, get some marker pen on it. And the tape measure across it, 70, uh, about 70. So we set our caliper to 35 or thereabouts. All right. And then we put the little fulcrum on the edge of the stock. Just hold it with your fingers. And then you just go around and you can see on the ends of the can that I hope you can see up it's not reflecting too much that in the middle of those intersections is a, is a blank area I mean, how fine you set this up will determine how big that is, but basically in the middle of that is where your, your centre point is and you drill your hole. You put your, uh, your uh, centre drill through there and uh, so, that's what these are for. You can do the same thing with dividers, uh, and I showed you in one of my early videos how to do it with dividers, but this is the real McCoy, and yeah, with a little, little cousin, it wasn't a bad buy for the money. Okay, well I hope you found it interesting, and uh, I'll uh, be off now. See you next time. Cheers.